Angie Dickinson is a familiar name in the realm of classic Hollywood. Renowned for her striking beauty and undeniable talent, she has been a presence on the silver screen for decades and undoubtedly caught the attention of many men throughout her life. However, in a recent revelation, Angie Dickinson has made a surprising confession about the true love of her life. In candid interviews, Dickinson opens up about the individual who has held her heart since their time together. Interestingly, it's not her ex-husband. So, who exactly was the love of Angie Dickinson's life? And why Angie Dickinson didn't marry him, even though he was the love of her life? Stay tuned to uncover the answers to these intriguing questions. From North Dakota to Hollywood. Believe it or not, Angie Dickinson's roots were firmly planted in the countryside long before she ever set foot on the glamorous stages of Hollywood. Growing up far from the dazzling lights of Los Angeles, she spent her early years in the desolate prairie towns of North Dakota, where the vast expanse of the landscape seemed to stretch to the edge of the world. But Angie's humble beginnings tell a tale far richer than meets the eye. Born in 1931, Angie entered the world during the tumultuous era of the Great Depression, a time marked by political upheaval and economic hardship. Raised amidst the challenges of the times and the isolation of rural living, Angie found solace and escape in the magic of the silver screen. Her father's job at the local theater provided her with a window into a world of fantasy and imagination, where she could lose herself in the captivating stories unfolding on the screen. However, Angie's childhood was not without its struggles. Her father, grappling with his own dashed dreams and the harsh realities of life, sought solace in alcohol, plunging their family into turmoil. Witnessing the destructive power of addiction firsthand, Angie was determined to forge a different path for herself. Despite her love for her father, she recognized the pitfalls of his choices and resolved to chart her own course, free from the burdens of alcoholism that had plagued her family. As Angie matured, her academic journey set her apart from the crowd. Attending Bellarmine Jefferson High School in Burbank, California, she distinguished herself among her peers. Not content with singular achievements, Angie's intellectual prowess and determination shone through when she won the sixth annual Bill of Rights video contest at just 15 years old, foreshadowing the numerous accolades that awaited her. Despite initially aspiring to a career in literature, Angie's path took an unexpected turn in 1953 when she won a beauty contest bridging her academic pursuits with the glamorous world of Hollywood. To enhance her skills and pursue her education, Angie enrolled in Immaculate Heart College and Glendale Community College. While studying, she also worked diligently as a secretary at Lockheed Air Terminal and took on a job at a parts factory. Balancing her aspirations, education, and the need for financial stability was no easy feat. However, fate had its plans. In 1954, Hollywood's silver screens called out to Angie, and she found herself cast in a Warner Brothers movie. This marked just the beginning of her journey. The 1950s, often hailed as the golden era of television, saw Angie becoming a familiar face on anthology TV series. It was evident that Angie had not simply arrived, she was here to stay. Her breakthrough came in 1956 with Gunned Down. The film wasn't just another project. It was Angie's ticket to the upper echelons of Hollywood. This was solidified when she won a Golden Globe Award for New Star of the Year for her exceptional performance in 1959's Rio Bravo, where she starred alongside icons like John Wayne and Dean Martin. The 1960s cemented her status as one of Hollywood's premier leading ladies, with a series of successes including Ocean's Eleven, The Sins of Rachel Cade, The Killers, The Art of Love, The Chase, and Point Blank. When discussing Angie's journey in cinema, it's impossible to overlook her unforgettable role in Rio Bravo. This 1959 masterpiece, directed by the legendary Howard Hawks, featured Dickinson alongside the iconic John Wayne and the charming Dean Martin. As feathers, Angie held her own against these industry giants, showcasing her talent and charisma. 
Her performance wasn't just a supporting role. It was a declaration of her acting prowess. The on-screen chemistry she shared with Wayne added a touch of romance to the action-packed Western, leaving audiences captivated. Yet Angie's ability to captivate extended far beyond the Wild West. In Brian De Palma's 1980 neo-noir thriller Dressed to Kill, she portrayed the character of Kate Miller, a woman entangled in a web of intrigue and danger. It was a daring move for the actress, stepping into mature and edgier territory. However, Angie, ever the versatile artist, effortlessly transitioned into the role, embodying the complexities and vulnerabilities of her character. The film not only achieved success at the box office, but also highlighted Angie's range and her knack for adapting to different cinematic landscapes. In the 1970s, Angie Dickinson took on an iconic role as Suzanne Pepper Anderson in the crime series Police Woman. The character made her debut on an episode of Police Story in 1973 before getting her own series the following year. Pepper Anderson was a groundbreaking character, setting a new standard for female actresses on television, and this role brought Angie Dickinson a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress, Television Series Drama, and three Emmy nominations. Reflecting on her role, Dickinson explained to Entertainment Weekly, Before me, women were always funny, or they were just tough. Pepper was really a first. She was sexual, funny, and in control. Policewoman, concluded in 1978. During the same period as Policewoman, Dickinson starred in Roger Corman's Big Bad Mama, alongside William Shatner and Tom Skerritt. Images from her intimate scene with Shatner stirred attention and reinforced her status as a sex symbol. Shortly after the end of Police Woman, Dickinson showcased her seductive allure once again in Brian De Palma's Dress to Kill, 1980. Two years later, she returned to series television with the short-lived show Cassie and Co. Following several television movies and guest appearances, Dickinson gained more attention on the small screen with the 1993 miniseries Wild Palms. In the series, directed and produced by Oliver Stone, she portrayed a seductive villain. Since then, her appearances in films and on television have been sporadic. She had small roles in movies such as 2000's Pay It Forward, alongside Kevin Spacey and Helen Hunt, as well as 2001's Big Bad Love, with Deborah Winger, Angie's Love Life, The Known and the Unknown. Off screen, Angie's love life was as captivating as her illustrious career. At the young age of 21, while Angie was studying at Glendale College, she tied the knot with her blue eyed college sweetheart, Jean Dickinson, who also happened to be a football player. Despite knowing each other for only 10 months, they made the decision to settle down. It appeared that everything was falling into place for Angie, holding both a college diploma and a wedding ring in her hands. However, just as her star was beginning to rise, fate threw a curveball into her happily ever after story. Their union ended in divorce in 1960, signaling the start of a tumultuous chapter in Angie's romantic life. It was during this period that Angie found herself entangled in a passionate affair with none other than the legendary Frank Sinatra. Dickinson's affair with Sinatra. The pair reportedly first crossed paths in 1953 during an appearance on the Colgate Comedy Hour. Sinatra, known for his boldness, instructed his bodyguard to bring Dickinson to his dressing room. Recounting the encounter during her appearance at the TCM Classic Film Festival in Hollywood in March 2015, Dickinson shared details of their initial conversation. Upon their introduction, Sinatra wasted no time in asking Dickinson if she was involved with someone else. To his inquiry, she responded affirmatively. Undeterred, Sinatra requested her phone number, which she willingly provided. Angie reminisced about Sinatra, labeling him as one of the most charismatic men that ever was, and admiring his remarkable voice. Their on-screen collaboration in Ocean's Eleven in 1960 further solidified their connection, with Angie portraying his wife. In a surprising revelation during a 2019 interview with CBS Sunday Morning, 
Angie disclosed the intensity of their affair, hinting at a potential marriage proposal in 1964. However, she confessed that she didn't desire marriage to Sinatra, fearing the prospect of rejecting him. Similarly, Sinatra harbored reservations about marrying an actress, and Angie understood his reluctance, especially considering his lifestyle of late-night revelry, which she preferred to avoid. Angie's second marriage to a composer. Instead, Angie chose to tie the knot with Burt Bacharach, a renowned composer, in 1965. Their marriage bore fruit with the birth of their daughter, Leah Nikki Bacharach. Tragically, Leah Nikki passed away at the age of 40 in 2007. However, the union between Angie and Bert was far from idyllic, marked by periods of unhappiness. In 1976, the couple decided to separate, with Bert retreating to their beach house in Del Mar, California, while still utilizing their residence in Beverly Hills. During this separation, both Angie and Bert pursued other relationships, yet Angie remained steadfast in her commitment to their marriage, considering them still bound by matrimony. The strain in their relationship became apparent, with rumors of infidelity swirling around Bert. Eventually, the alleged extramarital affairs took their toll, leading to the dissolution of their marriage in 1981. Reflecting on their relationship in a 2019 interview with CBS News, Angie candidly stated, He never loved me. I can tell you that right now, the way one loves. He loved in his own way, which is not too good. And so, he had no respect for me. Dickinson's Alleged and Real Affairs Angie Dickinson found herself entangled in rumors of an affair with none other than President John F. Kennedy. While flattered by the association with the esteemed president, Angie was quick to dismiss the more scandalous allegations. In Christopher Anderson's book, Jack and Jackie, Portrait of an American Marriage, it was reported that Angie allegedly described her encounter with Kennedy as the most exciting seven minutes of my life. However, she vehemently denied these claims, consulting lawyer Edward Bennett Williams, who advised against pursuing legal action due to the potential for exacerbating the rumors. Despite the rumors surrounding Kennedy, Angie maintained her stance, asserting that she never dated him and vehemently denying any advances from the president. Instead, Angie's romantic entanglements included a brief fling with future President Ronald Reagan during their collaboration on the film the Killers, in 1964. Reflecting on their connection, Angie mused that had circumstances been different, they might have pursued a relationship. Another notable figure in Angie's romantic history was Johnny Carson, with whom she shared a palpable chemistry during their appearances together on The Tonight Show. Their on-screen rapport led to speculation about their off-screen relationship with Angie acknowledging that they would always share an attraction. During her separation from Burt Bacharach, Angie caused a stir when she was publicly escorted by David Jansen, her co-star in A Sensitive, Passionate Man. Despite the attention their outing garnered, Angie remained resolute in her assertion of personal freedom and autonomy. Now 92 years old, Angie resides in Los Angeles where she continues to be an influential figure in the entertainment industry. Her contributions to television and film have been recognized with numerous accolades, including a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and induction into the Television Hall of Fame. Angie is celebrated as a trailblazer for women in TV and film, paving the way for future generations of actresses with her talent, tenacity, and undeniable charm. Dickinson's Candid Fox interview. Angie recently opened up about her relationship with Frank Sinatra in an interview with Fox News. The 91-year-old actress is currently preparing to present her 1959 film, Rio Bravo, at the TCM Classic Film Festival on April 13th, where she'll undoubtedly reminisce about her iconic roles. While reflecting on Rio Bravo, Dickinson also delved into her experience filming the subsequent major film to feature her name in the credits, the 1960s classic Ocean's Eleven, before starring in Police Woman, 
Angie Dickinson appeared in the original version of Ocean's Eleven in 1960, sharing the screen with actor Frank Sinatra, who portrayed Danny Ocean while Dickinson played his wife, Beatrice. Their on-screen chemistry translated into a reported 10-year love affair off-screen. During the filming of Ocean's Eleven, tensions arose when the movie's director requested a second take following one of their scenes, much to Sinatra's displeasure. Known for his impatience on set, Sinatra and Dickinson both believed that the scene didn't require another take. As a result, Sinatra left the set. Turning her attention to her career, Dickinson expressed profound gratitude for the numerous opportunities she has had in the entertainment industry. Acting remains her true passion, and she continues to approach each role with dedication and enthusiasm. Her enduring love for the art of acting shines through in every project she undertakes. In recent years, Dickinson has chosen to lead a more privity life, but she remains active in the entertainment industry. Sinatra's Sacred. After hearing Angie Dickinson's heartfelt expressions about Frank Sinatra, one might ponder what exactly made Old Blue Eyes so special to elicit such admiration. What was it about the Fly Me to the Moon crooner? that ignited such fervor in Dickinson and countless other ladies who swooned over him as if he were a Grecian god? Well, it seems that Frank had a not-so-little secret that certainly gave him an edge in the dating world. And no, it wasn't solely his good looks, charm, or mesmerizing voice. Frank Sinatra's allure extended far beyond his famous blue eyes, particularly when it came to captivating women. Not only was he a music icon and Hollywood star, but he also had a reputation as a notorious womanizer. Sinatra's second wife, Ava Gardner, famously provided explicit descriptions of his anatomy. According to her, he was exceptionally endowed in a certain area. She humorously remarked that out of his 110-pound frame, 10 pounds were dedicated to his manhood. Sinatra's charisma and mystique, combined with his rumored physical endowments, undoubtedly added to his appeal and fueled the fantasies of many admirers, including Angie Dickinson, Sinatra's appetite for women. Despite being married with children, Sinatra's appetite for women knew no bounds, a trait that persisted from his early big band days. He effortlessly charmed his way through Hollywood starlets such as Marilyn Monroe, Lana Turner, and Marlene Dietrich. Additionally, he had engagements with notable figures like Lauren Bacall and Juliet Prowse along with a short-lived marriage to Mia Farrow. Sinatra's extraordinary voice and charisma undoubtedly played a significant role in his romantic conquests, but according to his friend Gianni Russo, it was his well-endowed nature that truly left an impression on women. Sinatra's valet even disclosed in his book that the star had custom-made underwear designed to contain and conceal his size in public, a testament to the extent of his legendary endowment. The opportunities for Sinatra seemed limitless, with his friend Tommy Dorsey recalling how the star's effect on women was something awful. Sinatra himself acknowledged his voracious appetite, candidly admitting that he sought to indulge in as many romantic encounters as possible. Sinatra and Me The recently released memoir, Sinatra and Me, in the wee small hours, by Tony Opedisano, offers a captivating glimpse into the friendship and professional rapport shared between the author and Frank Sinatra during the latter years of the legendary singer's life. Within its pages, readers are treated to a treasure trove of never-before-seen photographs and intriguing revelations about some of the most iconic figures of the past half-century, from Jackie Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe to Sam Giancana, Madonna, and Bono. In one notable excerpt from Opedisano's book, Sinatra candidly expresses his admiration for Angie Dickinson, describing her as one of the most memorable lovers he had encountered. Sinatra's words underscore the undeniable allure and passion he felt for Dickinson, yet they also reflect his well-known penchant for romantic dalliances with numerous women throughout his life. For Sinatra, Love and desire were complex and multifaceted emotions, often intertwining with his larger-than-life persona and the tumultuous world of fame and fortune. 
Sinatra's reputation as a ladies' man precedes him, with numerous accounts painting a vivid picture of his voracious appetite for women. According to Opedisano, Sinatra's romantic escapades often involved multiple partners in a single day, with threesomes being a common occurrence. However, these fleeting encounters frequently led to turbulent relationships, causing Sinatra considerable anguish and trouble in the long run. For those intrigued by the dynamic between Frank Sinatra and Angie Dickinson, delving into the pages of Sinatra and Me promises a deeper understanding. This recommendation isn't a mere promotional plug. Rather, it's a genuine suggestion based on the wealth of fascinating insights the book offers. Beyond the realm of romance, Sinatra and Me delves into other intriguing aspects of Sinatra's life, including his alleged involvement in CIA plots, his theories regarding Marilyn Monroe's demise, and his connections with influential figures in the criminal underworld. It's a compelling read that sheds new light on the enigmatic persona of the Come Fly With Me crooner. As we wrap up, we're intrigued by the dynamic between Angie Dickinson and Frank Sinatra. Their enduring romance, despite never tying the knot, sheds light on the complexities of love in the limelight. Were you aware of their passionate relationship and Sinatra's candid remarks about Dickinson? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this glimpse into Hollywood's fascinating history, don't forget to like and subscribe for more intriguing stories. Thanks for joining us.